EA has teased the next Battlefield game at their most recent quarter one 2024 earnings conference call. This is the first time the company came out and publicly acknowledged that they are working on the next game. We don't know all the concrete details yet, but we do know one thing for a fact, and that's that this next game is very important to the franchise. Battlefield has been going downhill over the past couple of years, especially with the last three games. I personally like Battlefield 1, but I do understand why it's tough to sell people on playing a World War I game. Battlefield 5, not really that bad, but they royally botched the live service in that game, and by the time they gave us any real updates or any large amounts of content, well, they were already getting ready to move on to the next game. Then you have the most recent game, Battlefield 2042, which has been out for almost two years now, and it's probably the worst game in the franchise. There was, and still is, a lot wrong with that game. EA has stated that the next game will reimagine the franchise and feature a connected ecosystem. We have no idea what a Battlefield ecosystem looks like yet, but it does sound interesting. I don't particularly like hearing the word reimagine because I don't think Battlefield needs to change its looks. It actually needs to go back to its roots, sort of. So in today's video, I want to reflect a little bit on why Battlefield has been a failure lately and what I would like to see them do in the next game, which, in my opinion, could help them get back on track. Before I analyze Battlefield, let's look at the information we know about this next game. There's not a ton of details out there, and some of it is just rumor and speculation, but it's still worth noting. Heck, a lot of the rumors for MW3 were actually pretty accurate, so I feel okay talking about this stuff. There was a leak that came out early last year stating that DICE was deciding between a modern or near future setting for the next game. We don't know much about the connected ecosystem, but supposedly three studios will be working on this game. And I wonder if they're going to try to go the Call of Duty route and have each studio focus on one thing. Like one company makes the single player slash narrative experience, another studio is working on the core multiplayer experience, and the last studio perhaps is working on something new or something big like Battlefield's own version of Warzone or DMZ. I assume that a connected ecosystem means tying together three different products into the same game, again, similar to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. It remains to be seen what exactly they are planning on doing. Battlefield has a lot of catching up to do if it wants to be on the same level as COD. Honestly, they just need to worry about bringing back their fans that have either left or have been unhappy for the past few years. Battlefield 2042, honestly, had great potential. After a few historical war games, it made sense, and I know a lot of people were looking forward to them going to a modern slash near future setting. However, the game was a broken buggy mess at launch, and heck, I even remember playing back during the beta when that was even a mess, and I was mad to see the same issues in the game weeks later when it launched, even though I wasn't totally surprised since, you know, it's tough to completely clean up a game in that state and release it just a few weeks later. Some of the issues included UI glitches, messaging bugs, issues with the game's progression system, and even issues with the maps, like players falling through the floor or getting stuck in a wall. The game's live service was then delayed because of all the repair work that this game needed. The game was released on November 19th of 2021, and the first season came out in June of 2022. All of this led to poor reviews, 200,000 plus players signing a petition demanding a refund, and a game losing two-thirds of its player base quickly. It also did not help that the game did not release with a single-player experience, like so many other installments in the franchise. Even the cosmetics were pretty bland and boring for all these new specialists. And speaking of specialists, I have to address the game's most controversial feature slash change. The developers decided to overhaul the class system. Instead of having the typical four classes of Assault, Engineer, Medic, and Recon, they replaced them with Specialists. Now, the Specialists did technically fall under those same four categories, but everybody was able to equip any weapon or any gadget that the player has had unlocked. Each Specialist slash Operator, whatever you want to call them, has their own unique skills and gadgets too. Webster McKay, for example, uses a grappling hook, Boris can place down sentry guns, Irish can put down deployable cover, and I'll admit, I did like this idea at first because, hey, I get it. After making a huge amount of games, something has to change eventually, right? Over time, you gotta inject some new blood into this. I get it. However, after playing for a while, I started to realize, along with the rest of the fanbase, that this new class system just was not good. It's not that big of a deal. 
Having the freedom to use any weapon or gadget with whatever operator actually ruined the game. There's no sense of strategy when people will eventually just use the meta loadouts. The original class formula was better because it forced you to assume the role of the class you picked. If you wanted to be recon, then you had to snipe. If you wanted to heal your team, then you had to be a medic. It really makes no sense to choose a recon operator and then run around with an LMG. This new class system was just confusing and honestly pointless. And it would appear that 2042 tried the connected ecosystem already. There were technically three modes in 2042. You had All Out Warfare, which was basically your core multiplayer that featured Conquest and Breakthrough. Then you had Portal, which actually was really cool in my opinion because you could replay the old games like 1942, Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3, and adjustments could be made to the matches. Like, for example, you could use Battlefield 3 guns in a 1942 server, so it's World War II, but with modern-day weapons. It was a cool way to experience the old games and the old content again. And then you had Hazard Zone, Battlefield's version of Warzone slash DMZ, and that mode flopped. There's really not much to say about it. They quickly stopped providing service to that mode, so that was uh, a big tragedy. I hope EA and DICE don't overthink the next game, and unfortunately it already sounds like they are when they use the word reimagine. Yes, it could just be a PR statement to stir up hype, but Battlefield needs to go back to its roots. There's quite a few game franchises out there that are either starting to do this or really need to do this. The game does not need to be redesigned from the ground up. Focus on what made this franchise great from the beginning. Go back to the original class system. Bring back the destructible environments. And forget those crazy weather effects, at least until you can create servers that can handle the craziness. I'd rather go back to the environments like Battlefield 4 where artillery left holes in the ground and almost every structure could be destroyed. And believe it or not, a large portion of the fanbase still wants a single player experience. I've always been a fan of the Battlefield campaigns or even the war stories from Battlefield 1 and 5, and I'm still holding out hope for a Bad Company 3. Campaigns are valuable for multiplayer shooters still. These narrative experiences should be more than just giving developers more work. Campaigns should allow developers the opportunity to be more creative and take those ideas and find a way to transform them from the single player experience and use it in the multiplayer. You could technically take maps, characters, and other themes and ideas from the single player experience and use it in multiplayer at least as a foundation and you build upon that. We've already seen that before in all the Call of Duty games and all the Battlefield games in the past. Campaigns also add some flair, some character and personality to a game. Remember how cool Bad Company 2 was? It was an interesting story, but it also had memorable characters like Sweetwater and Haggard. 2042 tried to tell a narrative through the specialists and it didn't work. They also added narration when you loaded into a match, and again, it didn't work. I mean, who's really listening to audio when they're on the loading screen? People are chatting with the people in their party, or they're just on their phone scrolling through Twitter or TikTok. Back in the day, Battlefield stood tall right next to COD. Those two franchises were untouchable. And why was Battlefield right next to COD? Because it offered an experience that COD couldn't provide. COD was all about the run and gun style of play. The maps and the game modes were always up close and personal. Battlefield, however, provided gamers with the opportunity to play in large scale battles on huge maps and use different types of vehicles. The class system allowed you to have a role in a mini army, essentially. Personally, I think Battlefield 1 is a severely underrated game. I get that it's a World War 1 game and it might not be appealing to everyone, but the game was set up perfectly in regards to being a Battlefield game. The game offered a nice amount of game modes, but I was in love with Operations and Frontline specifically. Those two modes made it seem like you were truly fighting in a battle defending until the last man in a sector or pushing through enemy lines on the attack sector by sector. Fighting for territory with a ton of destructible environments should be Battlefield's MO. And look, I know Rush, arguably the franchise's best game mode, was not that great in Battlefield 1, but again, Operations and Frontlines truly had you feeling like you were fighting for every piece of land. Battlefield 5 also had great potential too. I originally liked DICE's idea for live service. It was called Tides of War. These periodic events would cover actual events during World War II. In this, they would release new maps, modes, guns, vehicles, and other cosmetic items. I also appreciated the fact that I could customize the look of my own soldier. I liked having the ability to change my uniform, maybe change my hat, and other parts of my character's looks. You were also able to unlock stuff with in-game currency that was earned through challenges. So I will say it one final time, 
the next Battlefield game needs to go back to its roots, and also bring with it some of the best parts of previous games. Of course the developers should look to add some new things, but don't try to change up the entire game like they essentially did in 2042. And honestly, half the battle is just releasing the game in a polished condition, for whatever reason that is extremely difficult for many developers today. You cannot release another buggy product and then postpone the launch of live service for like 8 months. EA and DICE need to allow us to customize our soldiers more. They also need to focus on how to add to the game modes and the maps themselves. Look at Hell Let Loose. The roles set up for each team in that game is very cool. And bring back the commander mode and maybe take a look at what Hell Let Loose does for the commander role. Their version of the commander is awesome. Incorporate a better voice chat system that's similar to Hell Let Loose as well, so you can actively talk to your teammates or your commander or proximity chat, you know, whoever on your team, whether they're in your squad or not, whoever you're stuck in a building with, you know, talk to them and work together with them. And bring back operations, but continue to expand on it. How about allowing the defending team to choose and set up their own defenses? How about allowing the attacking team to plan their own attack somehow? Maybe this is how you bring the commander mode back. The attacking commander can pick where to send vehicles and supplies on the map. Maybe the defending commander can choose where to place certain defenses when the match starts. Add to the game in ways like this. Don't change the winning formula. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on the next Battlefield game. Please support the channel by giving the video a like, and feel free to explore the channel and check out some of my other videos. You can also find me on Twitter and TikTok, Twitter at AnalyzeThis underscore YT, and TikTok at AnalyzeThis54 underscore YT. You can also listen to my content on Spotify. Just search Analyze This Podcast. Thanks for watching and take care.